What's up, guys? We are live from Chula Vista. Uh, this is going to be an awesome, awesome show. Talk about giving back. Talk about paying it forward. The man I'm going to introduce you to, that's what he does. This is It's, it's actually in his DNA. We were just talking before we got on, on uh, camera. Um, but before we do that, let me give you a little... You guys, like I said earlier, you guys think I wore a lot of hats or wear a lot of hats and do a lot of things. Um, I looked at this guy's bio... And it just went on and on and on. It's trying to give you the short version. That's yeah, it's awesome stuff though, man. Here at Much Motivated TV, what we like to do is uh, have you introduce yourself, and then we're gonna just take them from the beginning, man. Where this, you know, where did you, where did this all start? So introduce yourself. Uh, Ruben Torres, uh, founder of the Love Thy Neighbor movement here in, uh, in San Diego. And, uh, and host of the Connected with Ruben Torres podcast. Love it, man. Love it. And I'm hoping to jump on that podcast uh, yes, once you get yes. that thing, once you get that yes. thing rolling. And uh, I know our friend Gloria, I call her G, yeah, yeah. Uh, she hooked us up. So she's a, she's a sweetheart. I'm sure she's going to jump on. She's a um, lot like us. She's a connector and oh, she's, she's a just, shaker. Just, just a good, yeah. Thank you for hooking that up, Gloria. Absolutely. G, thank you so much. She's, I love that girl. Um, she's been on my show. We, we hit it off so quick and so uh, seamless that I actually brought her on. I had her on my show, but I actually brought her on uh, to be a co-host a few times. Yeah, nice, love her, man. Nice. Love her. Um, so you were born and raised here in uh, all the way down here in Chula Vista area or South Bay? Born in, born in Tijuana. Oh, okay. And, uh, and right. Yeah, I'm a South Bay boy. I was raised here in, in South Bay. I actually, uh, you guys can't see it, but when you guys come visit... <laughs> Chula Vista, I have a whole mural here dedicated to what we do here, paying homage to South Bay San Diego, and it's got all kinds of cool stuff and kind of, you know, people from, you know, South Bay and the things that make up South Bay San Diego. And, you know, I know when you told me you're from Fullerton, I was like, is that really considered San Diego? <laughs> so, well, what's going yeah. on up there? Yeah, but, right. Uh, no, it's, it's a beautiful thing, man. I think, uh, yeah. you know, connecting like this and, and that. Uh, you know, getting to know each other's worlds, what you do up there, what you know, you do. Yeah, and, and you're looking at, you know, I'm originally, I'm a kid from Jersey. I'm oh, an nice, East Coast nice. guy. So, you know, I've been out here since 2008. So our worlds are, you know, yeah. where we're from and where we're at, you know, yeah. completely different, but still the same. It's interesting. I, I get confused a lot for being from, from New York. Right, so, yeah, yeah. You know, when I go to New York, people think I just, I just fit, fit right, right in. in. Yeah. Hey, forget about it. That's it. So, yeah. That's you right. Go to Little Italy and, uh, right you, you're yeah. good to go, man. <laughs> no one right even know the difference. Yeah. Little Nicky Scarf yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so, uh, raised here, how was it growing up, man? You know, uh, being being in South San Diego, it's, it's funny because uh, it's kind of like you only have, you know, really two options it's like you join a gang or you sell drugs yeah and um or both yeah or both. right and and for us we chose music <laughs> so, so so how did that how did that go uh, down though because you catch a lot of heat you know there's a lot of yeah. tension there's a lot yeah. of uh expectations yeah. well you know um you know I, I won't lie you know a, a lot of our background did come from um you know just being knuckleheads in the neighborhood not i we didn't really join gangs but we're kind of more on the you know, doing knucklehead, selling dope stuff and all mm -hmm. that. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I think, uh, you know, we just kind of grew out of it at an early phase. And, you know, there's some of us that kind of kept going when some of us pulled out. And, uh, you know, we're introduced to the music side of stuff and, and here in, in the South Bay from a group called the Legion of Doom. Okay. And uh, they were a rap group from, uh, from San Isidro that kind of, you know, we all looked up to. Uh, they were just a little bit older than us, and we are kind of like part of their crew. And... We're helping like pass out flyers and hang up posters, and you know we're just all in amazement, just like someone's doing something, you know, right. here in San Diego, and um, and out of that birthed, um, you know, POD and you know everything else that kind of embodied that. And I grew up with the guys from POD, uh, Wood and Sunny, the singer and the drummer, wow. and we grew up, you see, in the Maitland. We all grew up on that street, and so. Uh, so, you know, that kind of opened up a lot more for me to do stuff. I was running the record label, the independent label, when um, when they were still, you know, smaller. And um, when they went on and signed with Atlantic, I kind of um, went on and did a bunch of film stuff. So I was able to go and join the film world and 
Did that, did that open doors for you once uh, they hit? Of course, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, because, you know, I was able to kind of, it was like those transferable skills, you know, I was yeah. able to say, hey, well, I did all this stuff with POD, and, and now, you know, they're selling yeah. millions of records, and so it kind of, yeah, of course, it helped open up doors, and, and any time that I needed them, it was, the, you know, their phone call away, and it's, yeah, they're just you know, from oh, the wow, you know, those guys, yeah, so it kind of opened up a lot of stuff, and, you know, kind of earned me a couple little, you know, trophies and whatnot, so, yeah. um, you know, it, it was it was definitely you know a blessing you know knowing both sides of it you know being mm -hmm. you know on the street side of it and then being on the you know corporate side of it and um, and you know I think it it, it was uh, to me it was a little eye opening because I was able to you know kind of jump in on the corporate side of stuff you know when I needed to and you know I was able to kind of open up um, you know I started my own record label and did a bunch of stuff on, on my side produced a ton, tons of music videos and did all that kind of stuff. So, you know, to me, it was um, it was a blessing, you know, being able to do that stuff and being, you know, from San Diego. Well, I think, too, is when you don't have that street experience, you, you're not you're probably not going to go down the road you went down because that street experience and in, in my world across the other side of the country, same thing, right? Yeah. Left back in second grade, diagnosed with yeah. ADD, said I had a learning disorder, never graduated high school. At 19, I'm sitting in the jail cell looking at 8 to 10 if things don't go my way, yeah. right? Yeah. So I wasn't supposed to win, but it's interesting when you have that, um, and this is what it sounds like, right? We have the yeah. same story. Yes. We just yes. grew up in different parts of the, of the country. Yeah. Um, but growing up, when you don't fit into that cookie cutter mode, you're told you're not supposed to win, yeah. right? Don't expect a lot out of yourself. Yeah. But that gives you the things that you got from the street, things right. that I got from the street. Right. There's not a there's not a, a university in this world yeah. that that will teach you. Hard Talk knocks. about that. Yeah. Talk but, about know, that. To me, um, you know, I was able to to do all these fun things and, and see you know see the world and do all these cool things with all these cool people, um, in spite of you know because to me, you know, I think it was kind of like. You know, I'm a high school dropout, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. born in Mexico. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's just one of those things, you know, I struggle here and there with some, you know, dyslexia every now and then. Sure. So to me, I'm like, dude, you know, we, we're doing all these things in spite of our circumstances. And, and it don't matter where we grew up. It don't matter, you know, what we went through. And I almost and, feel like it's we're doing these things because of our circumstances. Yes. Definitely. I do. I feel like, and that's, that's such a great message to get out because... The parents that are have kids that are struggling, or the kids that are struggling right now, and think that they can't make it, it actually is building you to be so resourceful, yeah, right? And yeah. figure it out as you yeah. go, and and that's what uh, my son's right? here filming right now. And I always tell him, you know, I'm a big John Taffer fan. Yeah. And so yeah. he always says, embrace solutions. You know. Yes. It's one thing I, you know, I always always kind of go for. Like, don't. Let's not concentrate on the problems. Like we all know the stuff that we went through and. And let's not focus on the negative. Let's look for the positive, and, and let's find some solutions, you know, to whatever it may be. You know, to me, I, you know, I hate just dwelling on the negative, and you know, let's just move forward. You know, yeah, let that stuff happen. Boom. Let's it's it's such a waste of energy. And then yeah. I always tell people too is embrace those scars, man. Wear those yeah. scars with pride, because that's who you are. That's yeah. what that's what made you yeah. who you are. So yeah. again, I can feel that entrepreneurial DNA, man, just <laughs> oozing out of you, yeah. and I love it. I yeah. love it. Thanks, man. Uh, so growing up, you you had to figure out. Look, man, I didn't want to be in the gang. I knew there was going to be a dead end road. Yeah. So you so you jumped right into music. Yeah. That became your identity, right? Yeah. In a way. You know, I, I uh, <laughs> did you take to it like that? Or? Well, you know, I, I don't I don't talk about it much, but I, you know, I was it's part of the story. Mm -hmm. But I was uh, I was in a little rap group back in the day. And, okay. You know, and, you know, it was what it was. But you know, what opened up my eyes is. Um, I had the opportunity of a lifetime. We opened up for Run DMC. Right. Uh, Run DMC to me was like they were right gods. Yeah, to <laughs> me, was like, dude, this is it. And uh, wow. so we shared the stage with them here at Belly Up. And I want to say it was like in 1994. Really? At the Belly Up Theater, yeah, uh, Belly Up uh, in Salt yeah. Beach. So, um, you know, it was just a trip. Like, you know, I'm there and I'm thinking, dude, this is. I don't need to do anything else. This is, you know. And then I go backstage and then I see. You know, Run DMC back there, and they're kind of taking orders from these guys in suits, older guys in suits, and they had the big old cell phones. And the, yeah. you know, back yeah. then it was the big old brick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, and so, you know, I'm looking at the two, and I'm like, you know, the career of those old guys will never expire, but nobody wants to see a you know 67 year old rapper on, on stage no more. And I was like, 
I want to do what those guys do. Like they have the they, power. They can. They, they don't expire. You know, it's a good way. To, it's interesting yeah. that you saw that like yeah. that, though, huh? So um, I think that was probably the last show I did because I was I wanted the corporate side of it. You wanted the back end. And yeah. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I don't need to do all this. I want to. I want to find out what's going on behind the scenes, and you know that inspired me to you know go and, and uh, you know do my record label and, and do all the stuff that I that I you know had done, but um, you know I just I always stayed you know kind of in the mix and. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it, it was just one of those things where I felt like, man, maybe I could be the 80 year old guy in the suit, you know, and, and not a, you know, not a 80 year old guy on stage trying to that expire. You know, yeah, wave your right. hands in the air like you just don't. Care. <laughs> so, that ain't gonna work. You know, right. It's, you, right. It's done after a while, but yeah, but, that's uh, interesting that that hit you like that. Yeah. Yeah, and then and then you ran with it. So once you made that decision, you started your own record label. Then what? Then. Um, uh, opportunity. I got really busy during that time of uh, uh, doing the record label to where uh, some film opportunities started opening up, and um, you know, I like, jumped into a couple little uh, indie films and producing a ton of music videos. And at the time, um, our friend uh, that we went to school with, Ray Mysterio, he was involved with uh, WCW. Yeah. So uh, he would always give us tickets and tell him come see him and come support. And so we'd follow him around, all right, cool, where are you going to be? All right, let's go. Oh, yeah. He'd hook us up with all kinds yeah. of, you know, tickets backstage. And then uh, and then it came a time where he was like, hey, man, you know, I need some music. And so I was like, cool, man, I got, you know, guys on my record label that'll do the music for you. So that opened up the whole WCW thing because now we were talking to corporate. And, um, and so we licensed some music to them from a group called Ill Harmonics. To uh, two white kids from Texas that uh, they just they were awesome. They, you know, I had them all over MTV and all kind of stuff. And he loved the song. Kind of had like a little Latin yeah. vibe song. And he loved it. So uh, so after that, Conan, um, yeah. he was from Wolfpack. Another wrestler, yeah. yeah. And so uh, so he was like, hey man, I need some music too. And plus, I need a music video. Can you do? It? And I was like, beautiful. There it is. And that right. opened up everything. So at that point, that's when we started. You know. We, producing, yeah, started producing for the, for the rest Yeah, wow. So um, I did. So a bunch did of you have to work with? So how did you? Once, once the second wrestler decided to use you, did you now have to go to WCW and cut a deal? Yeah, well, it was, or was uh, it individual. No, no, we were working with directly with WCW. Okay. So, um, so they, our checks would say, you know, really, yeah, wow. Say WCW, Ted Turner Television, the whole thing. So, um, so yeah, I mean, he Conan opened up the doors. For everybody, every I want to say probably a good ninety-eight percent of every Latin wrestler that you've ever seen on TV has probably come from Conan. Really? And, uh, and he lives here in Chula Vista too. Is yeah. he from here? Um, he's from Miami. Uh, okay. He's East Coast, but he's you know he, he came out here to to TJ. He was in the Navy. He was boxing in the Navy. Came out here to to you know San Diego, and someone seen him you know working out. Yeah. And, you know he was huge. And said, "Hey man, you ever done any, you know, Mr. Libre wrestling?" And he was like, "No, man, never even heard of that." What's that? And they took him down to TJ, and, and he met uh, Rey Mysterio Sr. and he got trained in the ring. And, um, and oh, so he, everything else was history. So Ray came after that. So oh. so Conan was like the biggest thing ever. Like so, yeah. he was on the very first Monday Night Raw with Vince McMahon. Like they, wow, he, like he was, really? Yeah, he was that huge. Because I remember so, him with the Wolfpack. Yeah, I mean, he was. Yeah. He yeah, hit it. Yeah. I mean, he, he had the mic skills. He still got mic skills. Yeah. And um, and, and so, he was an athlete. Yeah. And so he he's he's a mastermind when it comes to behind the scenes of of what it takes to to Is he? Make, create a, a wrestling show. Like he's bottom line, he's a genius. What's he doing now? I'm um, still doing it. Yeah. He's, um, he's not necessarily wrestling in the ring, but he um, he has a promotion in. in Tijuana called The Crash, oh. which is probably the biggest independent Mexican wrestling uh, promotion in, wow. in Mexico. Um, and he's in TNA now, um, oh. so yeah, Impact Wrestling. Wow. And he's kind of more like takes on the man the managerial mm -hmm. role. Yeah. Um, he jumps in the ring every now and then to beat someone yeah. with a chair or something. You know, he's, yeah, right, he right. still does all that, but uh, uh, you know, he manages Rey Mysterio. And, uh, you know, he's in the mix. Yeah. You know? So um, and he that guy's just a genius, but. He opened up the doors for us to be able to do, you know, a couple music videos with him. Um, I got him in the studio with one of the rappers I know, and then um, at that point we just had direct contact with, with WCW. So 
anytime WCW wanted anything Latin or ghetto, <laughs> they would call us. Up. They were like, hey, you know, we yeah. need uh, something down in Chicago Park, or, you know, can you go out to El Paso and shoot something with uh, Eddie Guerrero? Really? You know, go shoot some stuff with Latino World Order. Like, beautiful, all right. Wow. And, uh, and yeah, you know, to us, it, it was a beautiful thing. I think we worked with them for about a year and a half, two years. That was a good run. And, and yeah, and, you know, we were everywhere with them, you know, and it was just, it was a beautiful thing. So thanks, Conan and Ray, for helping us Absolutely, up. man. Um, How did it end? Like, what happened? Um, well, you know, I mean, I think uh, WCW was just kind of... Yeah, they started... Oh, down. was that towards the end when yeah, they were... Yeah, they started yeah. slowing down, and, and um, I think they kind of came to their senses where they were like, why are we paying these outside guys when we can just send our own crew out there? You know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was just one of those. But, yeah, it was a good uh, run. But in, in 2004, you know, we had the opportunity, or 2005, I think, had the opportunity to um, bring P.O.D. and Rey Mysterio together. And, and uh, P.O.D. did the theme song for Rey Mysterio. So they performed at WrestleMania, I think, 22, something like that. Wow. Um, with Rey Mysterio um, when he, he won the cha world champion belt. Wow. So, yeah, so that was a big deal. That was... Man, San that, Diego in the house. That's huge. Yeah. So that's, to me, I'm, I'm a huge wrestling fan. Six one nine in yeah. the house. So right? when I seen you automatically, I was like, "Is that Bill Goldberg?" <laughs> it's so funny because he lives in Fallbrook. Does he? Yeah, I nice. see him. We, we see each other at the deli once wow. once in a while. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That dude, he's he's amazing too. Yeah, man. yeah. What a what a marketing machine, yeah. man. Oh yeah, he just had a nice little run too with uh, WWE. Yeah, yeah. He did yeah. WrestleMania with yeah. Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Yeah. So um. So now, past 2004, so once uh, WCW was over, you had that run, where'd you, where was your next journey? Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like I'm like the Forrest Gump of it all. <laughs> I, I did like a little bit of everything. Yeah, but it's awesome, man. But uh, Yeah, you know, I, I stayed doing, um, you know, a whole ton of video stuff. Um, and then, uh, you know, I've even been in a couple little music videos, did a little bit of acting, like I, not much, but... Um, in 2004, 2005, me and Sonny Sandoval, the singer for P.O.D., we launched a, a Latin-based um, clothing line, that's, that's like streetwear. It was called Hefe Clothing. And so uh, we launched Hefe Clothing, and uh, we had a licensing deal with a company here called ODM, and um, we just launched it, and it went worldwide. Like our, we had stuff everywhere. And, Japan, really? so Spain was one of our biggest. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was just, it was just took off, you know, huge. And, um, yeah, we were living off it. It was, it was a nice, nice little. You know, how long did you have that? We had that for uh, probably about four years. Okay. Um, then I uh, just sold off the licenses and let them run with it. You know, yeah, no, so it's kind of what every entrepreneur is. That's it. You know, what I mean? that's you know, it. Build it's up a business and boom. You know, move it on is. It's, yeah. it's it's in our DNA yeah. to keep to keep yeah. moving, keep doing things. And that's some of the things I want you to be able to share because, again, your background, right? You weren't, on paper, you weren't supposed to make it, no, right? Yeah. And that's that's the real. But share some of your, your thoughts, your experiences, your mindset on why you're able to do what you do. Um, I, of course, you know, I, I, being uh, the person that I think um, I am today, I, you know, I give all... You know, all glory to God, you know, to me, um, you know, I think if, if it wasn't, you know, for for just God's grace, you know, digging me out of the stuff that, that I was involved in and um, around the places I was around and the people I was around, you know, just all that, you know, I think, um, I think God just allowed me to kind of, you know, be a knucklehead for a certain season and then pluck me out to clean me out to put me back in and, and be a light in certain places, so... And move in, a, move in a different direction, right? Yeah. Here's one thing I want to highlight because so people know, right, especially kids that are looking, is and I'm a firm believer that God, the universe, whatever title you want to put on it, only wants to help those that want to help themselves, right? So you always have those choices. Yeah. You could have yeah. you could have went right back yeah. and went down a whole other path, yeah. but you made that conscious decision yeah. to not do that. Yeah. And I well, think that's what... It, you know, like you're saying, you know, you want to be able, you know, to help yourself, but, you know, in a spiritual sense, meet God halfway. Like, you know, you, you're going to be praying, oh, God, get me out of this. Or, but, and, and you got to do your part. Yeah, and stay still. That's not the way it works. You've you know? got, yeah, you've got and, to do your part. And so, to me, I think um, being where we're at and, and under the circumstances that we're at, um, 
I just wanted to not be in the same place I was, you know, six months before love or that, a year man. before. I love that. That's and, a, um, if you can't if you can't grow and and have some accomplishments, like to me, like I'm honored when you say, Oh man, I read your bio and I kept going yeah. on that. Like there's stuff I just haven't even you know been too mm -hmm. caught up to even put in the bio or to add on to all the stuff and stuff that I was telling you, all oh, the prison stuff to me, like those are accomplishments. And, Absolutely. And uh, and I don't want to be when you call me six months from now, hey, what's up? What are you doing? I don't want to be in the same place where I was six. I want to grow. I want to continue. And see, to grow. that's the golden nugget, man. If anybody's going to get anything out of this show today, that's the golden nugget. If you can set yourself up to where, and I always call it, you need non negotiables in life, yeah. right? What are your non negotiables? And I just did a, 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 a post on that today, and I love that non negotiable for you. I'm, I refuse to be the same person I was six months ago, yeah. right? Uh, three months ago, yeah. five days ago. Yeah. And, and I, that is such a recipe for success. Yeah. I, I think, honestly, Ruben, I think if somebody said, what's your, what is, how do you create success? And if you just really wanted to give one statement, that's it. Yeah. You're definite, that's it. Because you have to win. Yeah. You know, I, I love that. Man. Yeah. That's an awesome mindset. It, it, to me, I, I, uh, I wanted to start to choose, and, it, and it's hard for me, but choosing integrity over popularity. Um, Talk who, about that. Who doesn't love popularity, right? Right. And, and to me, like, you know, my, my wife always kind of, you know, like, man, you know, you're a social media whore, you're always on you know, <laughs> And it's like, yeah, because I've, I've got to promote myself. This I've got to let people business. know what I'm yeah. doing and, yeah. and moving and shaking. And, and, uh, and to me, it, you know, it's it's the way I kind of try to justify stuff sometimes. Like, oh man, but you know, I gotta let people know we're gonna go, you know, mm -hmm. feed the homeless, or we're going to the prison, or we're doing all these things, and I want people to get activated and yeah. be inspired and come it's up to the platform. Side, be a part. Yeah, but uh, but that that popularity is something that that I think we all fall into, where we choose that vanity and we want to go after that. And who doesn't love popularity, right? right. But you know, if if it's going to get to the point where it's going to control you and, and destroy your um, integrity, then that's where you draw the line. But then, then you're out of alignment, yeah. right? But I, I always say, if you can, if you want to learn how to be bulletproof in life, live with intention. Yes. When your intention is pure, yes. you're yes. bulletproof, yeah. right? So, so then I always say, that it's, I'm glad you talked about popularity because when you live with pure intention. Now your popularity is with the right crowd. Yes. It's with the right tribe. Yeah. So now you are bulletproof. Yeah. And I always tell people this too, because I talk about fear barriers, right? How to crush those those dreaded fear barriers and let's, let's and, show that book and, and get your money back from the uh, from the go. ultimate bully, right? Those fear <laughs> barriers. We're gonna get that lunch money back. And honestly, fear is a thief. It's it, it's a bully, right? Yeah. It's gonna take your yeah. lunch money every time if you let it. And I believe one of the the actually probably the biggest fear that people have is what other people think. Yes. I always say, when you live with intention, right? Yeah. I live with intention. When my intention is pure, if I use a word or a sentence that offends you, that's on you. My intention is pure to give back. Yeah. And that's and I think, ultimately, when you're talking yeah. about popularity, yeah. if as long as you're clear on who you are yes. and your direction, yeah. you become bulletproof. Talk about that. You know, I, I, it, <laughs> it's funny that you bring that up. Um, just even with, with the, that content of um, integrity versus popularity, um, you know, we have a little mini little Bible study here the other day, and and um, that, that was something I, I came across because I feel sometimes um, I try to be a people pleaser and I say yes to everything so much, and I'm like, whoa, well, you know, I had to call a friend of mine today and, and, and let him know that hey, um, I'm not going to be able to do that event. You know, I was, you know, called to do this event out in LA and be on a panel and just can't do it. As much you know attention as I would get, and not good for what we're doing. You know, I've, I've said yes to these other things as well, and it's kind of in-house stuff. And you know, I can't. You know, I spread myself too thin, and and I can't. I struggle. That that's a struggle, man. Is being a people pleaser, and sometimes being that people pleaser brings you down. And I hate being not liked. You know, and, right, right. You know, I'm like, I'm such a nice guy. Or accepted. You like me. Or yeah. Accepted. Or accepted. Right. And so to me, I'm like, you know what? Um, you know, I was, I was reading a scripture, and I'm, I can't quote it word for word, and I'll yeah. destroy it, but I was reading a scripture that, that said, you know, even, um, you know, the leaders in the time of Jesus were afraid to speak out because people would, would bash them for what they believed, what they stood for, and um, and I was like, man, sometimes, you know, I feel like that, like, I don't want to speak out because the fear of, 
you know, not being liked by a certain crowd or a certain, and that's me being a people pleaser, and that's, you know, my integrity, I think, falls when, um, you know, it's, you're it's out of not alignment. that intent, yeah, when it's you, not that you, intention. You're out of so, alignment, it's, yeah. it's that old saying, right? You, the better you make yourself, the better everyone else around you can yeah. be, so put that oxygen mask on first, right? right? right. And, and, yeah. Yeah. and and to me, if, if, I, if I don't fix those little things about myself, and, uh, and you know, I've always been taught, you know, always preach the gospel, sometimes use words, you know, and it's, it's, it's about what people see you do, your actions, not anybody can yep. do this, but yep. my son's right here, my son's 15 years old, and it's about what he sees me do, not what he, from what he, yep. my mouth. What you are know? you doing? But, you know, even when you think people aren't looking, people are looking. That's my son. Yep. I, got, I got two daughters as well, and they're always looking, and, and they'll be the first to call me out. Yeah. Hey, Daddy, who do you think you are? You know, they'll be the first ones to call me out. You know, my wife's Puerto Rican, so she'll be like, "Yo, you know. you're in trouble." Yeah. So, you're in so, trouble. You know, and uh, you know, it's it's those things, and and I think, um, you know, surrounding yourself with with you know, like people like yourself that that want to not be in the same place, want to continue to grow, and I think taking that even a step further to where it's like you want other people to grow and you want other people to be not where they're at, you know, mm -hmm. six months mm -hmm. ago. And I think that's what takes us to another level. And, you know, with Love Thy Neighbor, we say we want to, you know, inspire other people and, and empower them, give them that, the tools. Like, man, you want to start your own 501c3? Well, we know some people that can help yeah. you do that. Oh, you want to go feed the homeless? Like, I'll, I'll make a couple calls and I'll tell you who's doing it, you know, and go team up with them, you know, and, and there, there hasn't been any time ever where anybody has called me on any kind of resource and said, hey Ruben, do you happen to know someone that does this? Boom, here it is. I'll yep. send, I don't hold back any of my resources. I want everyone to to be empowered. I want everyone to have that, you know, you don't have to do what I'm doing or with me. Like, I want you to do something. Don't matter who it's with, where but it's do at, it. do it. But do Just it. Just do it. And, yeah. you know, and I've, I've always told people that, like, man, it don't matter, like, you know, everybody wants to give during, you know, Christmas and do all this stuff, like, do it. Like, right. you don't have to give to love thy neighbor, you don't have to be a part of what we do, but go do it. You know, you don't have to go to orphanage that we go to, go find your own orphanage, you know. Yep. You don't have to whatever go. it is. Yeah, it whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. And so to me, I, I think, um, you know, find those things that, that where your heart's at, wherever you're passionate for, and, and go after that. You know, I was having a conversation with this couple over in Barrio Logan, and they, uh, they had mentioned to me that, hey, you know, we collected a bunch of stuff and we want to give this to, to the homeless, but how do we go about it? And we're, and I was like, well, what's your passion? Why were you doing it? You know, and they're like, well, you know, we want to help kids, we want to help homeless. And I was like, well, you know, right here in Barry Logan, there's a school called Monarch, and it's a school for homeless. Like, it's right in your own backyard, and you can just go there and donate everything that you give to, to them. And that way it stays in the neighborhood and you can continue, you know, like it doesn't have to go to our, our the orphanage that we work with in TJ or the shelters. Like it's right here in your own backyard. And that was your passion. That's why you did it. And so now it's going back into your neighborhood. And, your and so to me, it's those things like, you know, and, you know, they came to me and they're, hey, we were inspired by the stuff that you do. And we wanted to move in, you know, in that direction. And I was like, man, I'm honored. Like that's a huge blessing to hear that we were able to inspire anybody. But, um, Man, like just do it, you know. Like do well, something. It, you know? Just do it. Yeah. Just, just keep do it. take that next step, yeah. and then the other one's going to show itself yeah. once you keep moving forward. Yeah. I wanted to talk to you about. I know you had some really cool artwork around here. Yeah, yeah. So I want I want you to kind of share that story and set yeah. this up because we're going to show some awesome artwork yeah. here in a minute. Well, um, we've been able, we've been privileged to be able to go into uh, into the, the prisons and. Uh, Soledad State Prison, they uh, they continue to invite us to keep coming back. So now you go in as your organization? As Love Thy Neighbor. Yeah. And then, yeah. so you go in just to, to speak? Uh, we speak sometimes. Sometimes it's just to, to be there. Um, okay. Uh, this last time we went in for an art show. Um, the time before that, there was a cancer awareness event. Um, they did a Relay for Life walk. And so um, as, as Love Thy Neighbor, we brought in a live band. We brought in a DJ. Um, I was able to do the opening prayer, um, you know, and sometimes it's, you know, hey, you know, grab the mic and share your heart, yeah. or sometimes it's just hang out with the guys and show them some love and be yep. in here and, and, you know, and just love on the guys, you know, so it's whatever we're called to do, whenever we have the opportunity to do awesome. it. Um, you know, we brought a, a live reggae band from here in San Diego called I Abide, 
Um, and then uh, the time before that, we took in a band that was from Modesto called Anton Lions. And so, you know, they're it's kind of sound like POD, Rage Against the Machine. Kind yeah. of, so, you know, they're all loving it. Yeah. So, um, so, you know, we're able to do those kind of things for them. And, and you know, one of the things that, that got me early on was, um, you know, we're in the yard with like, like 900 inmates and yeah. all these guys are like lifers, you know. And so, you know, you don't know who's who and who's done what, but, you know, we're saying our goodbyes. We were there for like eight or nine hours, and then one wow. of the guys comes and he, you know, he gives me one of those long hugs, and I'm just like, oh, you know, <laughs> you know, get shanked or something yeah. quick, you know. And so we're sitting there, and, and uh, you know, he just tells me in my ear, and he was like, hey, Ruben, um, I just wanted to say thank you, man, because for one day you made me feel like I wasn't in prison. Mm, and, you know, I, I was wearing shades, and I just started crying like a baby. To me, that that's it. That made it. That's it. it. Yeah, that made it. That's it. And so, you know, since then, you know, we we get invited to go back, and every time, you know, they invite us, we just boom, 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 go. So, uh, so you know, it's always kind of out of our own pocket for us to go, and then now, like, they're collecting donations so that that we can go and oh, we'll pay for your hotels, and we'll you know, we'll just send you some money, and you come. And usually it's the other way around, you know, we're yeah. trying to send them yeah. money. But uh, so back in June, um, we had the, the community come together and, and collect donations, um, art supplies, um, because they're gearing up to do an art show. In so, the prison. Inside the prison. Right. So, um, so we reached out to the community and a, a friend of mine, Andy, got a bunch of donations um, from, uh, you know, an art supply store and all this different stuff. So... We took this. We took all the art supplies in in, in June, and uh, when we returned, they were like, "We just want you to see what we did with the art supplies that the community of San Diego came to drop off." And if I can pull this out, we'll yeah, out. absolutely. This so, is this is awesome. So you guys got called, dropped the art supplies off, yeah, and you didn't really know what was going to happen from there. No, we just right? we didn't expect anything to come back to us. Yeah. We just thought we just wanted them to. This is awesome. To stay out of trouble, you know, yeah. art art is rehabilitation. You know? It's therapy. Yeah, so they're there, and as long as they're they're drawing, painting, doing whatever, they're staying out of trouble. It's therapy. Yeah, yeah. they're not yeah. fighting. They're not being yeah. knuckleheads. And this is one of the pieces. Um, if you guys can see, man, it's, that is awesome. It's a charcoal piece. Wow. And uh, I mean, that's amazing. Yeah, this is a charcoal piece. It's going to be in the uh, Heart of Boxing uh, Art Show coming up September 30th. September 30th, where at? Uh, it's going to be in uh, Paradise Hills, the House of Boxing. So when we jump off, right, you're going to be able to jump back on yeah. and post everything? Yep. Because I'll come down. Yep. Look at the detail in that. Yeah. That's absolute. So one prisoner just did this. Yes. Just. And you've seen all the rest of the stuff. So we have. Oh, man. We have a ton of, a ton of stuff that came in. Look at this guy here. Smooch on eBay art. Look at that. Man, that is, that's a, that's, that's amazing, man. Yes. So, to me, like, when, when we get stuff sent in like this, um, I mean, look at that. Just the detail. It's wild. And we have a lot of this displayed here in our office, and a lot of the reason that we display some of this stuff is because it breaks the stereotype of what you think the prison art would be. Yep. You know, a yep. lot of it is... In your mind, it's the the Chicano um, mm -hmm. black and white pencil or pen, and uh, you know, in, in your mind, that's oh, you get prison art, and it kind of turns you off. But you see this stuff, you see the and some of the stuff on that's the wall. It's just and, amazing. Yeah, and it's it's different than the stuff that you'd see on on a on an envelope from one of the inmates. You no, know, it's that draws it's, the girl. With the I mean, this is this is like real. Yeah, I mean, is, this is yeah, this is a level. Yeah, this yeah. is this is an absolute level, man. I I love that and. Uh, Hey man, just throwing it out there too, Ruben. If uh, you know any of these prisons that you're hooked up with, they ever want anybody to come in and speak, I'd be they lo do. I'd love they to. They do, man. as a matter of fact. I'd love to, man. They've, uh, they've asked me. They have a, a program um, in there called uh, Success for Life. Love and, to, do, um, man. I'll even I'll donate books. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah, I'd love that. I'll they'd donate like books, that. man. They yeah. uh, they've asked me to uh, to invite in some you know some speakers. Let's and, do it. And anybody else you know, I know you have a large yeah. fan base, so anybody else that wants to join in, um, I want to say it's like on Mondays, but I'll get details. Just get us know. details? Yeah, I'll yeah just details. Go, just give me a heads up, yeah. and then, uh, yeah, Successful we'll do it. Life. And then I'll, I'll bring a bunch of, you know, I'll bring some books, and, yeah. uh, and we'll, yeah, yeah, man, we'll just, be awesome. yeah, I'd love, I'll just share my story. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, I'd love to do that. that. When, uh, when we were there this last time, CNN was doing a story on one of the guys, his name is uh, Hugo Gonzalez, and, um, 
he's an awesome, awesome dude, and he's putting together a book for um, for donations to come in to love thy neighbor through prison art. So he wants to do a book, he wants to publish a book on prison art and all the wow. everything that comes through, he wants to donate back to the to love the neighbor. So this guy he he sells art at the art shows to the correction officers, to, really? Gordon, to whoever's their administration. And um, he doesn't take money from it. He says, Okay, um, he he'll write down an organization, he'll say, you know, this piece goes for five hundred dollars and go ahead and send it to this organization. This piece goes for six hundred and fifty dollars. Go ahead and donate it to that organization, and he just gives, gives, gives. So he's a little guy, and he's got a personality this big. He is so love infectious. It. He I love he it. could write a book. He is so awesome. Like when you meet this guy, like you just want to know more. And and how just, old is he? Just love this guy. He's uh, early thirties. Is it, how much uh, is he life? He's life. life. Um, I think he's probably looking at parole maybe within the next four or five years. Oh, okay. All um, right. So he's been in there probably about, so, I want to say, 14 years or so. Yeah, man, big part but, uh, of his adult life. Yeah. yeah, but CNN was doing a story on him. They're yeah. following him around. As a matter of fact, he's going to be doing a TED Talk inside wow. inside so really? State Prison. So he's, been, he's doing a TED Talk. Um, while we were there, CNN was there because... The group that he started called Success for Life, they got a bunch of people together and people from the outside to donate to to their program. So what they're doing with this money is they found an inmate or a inmate's family, this, this this kid that's a high school student, that he wanted to go to like a higher education, a, a different school, private school, and um, and so what they're doing is is he was kind of like us. All the odds are stacked against him, so they said we don't want this kid. We, we want to, you know, we want to bless him to where he takes his education to the next level so he doesn't turn out like us. So a bunch of the inmates got together, they collected this money, and they're paying for his year, first year of tuition to go to the wow. school. And so CNN was blown away, like, what the heck did you guys just do? You guys just raised wow. you know, whatever it was, $16,000. And so, and now they're, now that they gave him the money, they're starting to collect for the next year's tuition. So his year, his you know, years of schooling are going to be from inmates inside Soledad State Prison. And to wow. me, that's just an awesome story. I mean, that's 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 badass. Yeah. I mean, that's... So to me, like, going in there and hearing these stories and hearing what these guys do, um, to me, is just, it's, you know, it's unbelievable. And it's, you know, the reason we keep going, too. And, you know, we get to share, you know, our, you know, what we stand for, what we're about. And to me, it's... Just a blessing on top. You know, everything else is just you know, the cherry on top. It, it, it really is, yeah. especially when you get somebody that says, "You know what? I felt like I wasn't in prison." Yeah. You know, that's. I mean, that's that's the real. And that's yeah. that's the perception. I always and and we we'll always hear about people that are in a funk or they're not feeling good or whatever that is, and and they're down on themselves. And I always say, "Look, man, the best way, the quickest way to get out of a funk is get out of your bubble yeah. and look at the people." That are having much worse than you, yeah, yeah. and and the ones that the ones yeah. that are go well. I, I go. Let me take you to the children's hospital, right? Oh, yeah. That twelve year old little girl that's fighting for her life for yeah. cancer, yeah. and she's the rock of the family. Yeah. Talk about. Tell her that's, about your problems, right? Yeah. These guys are looking at you know twenty to life, yeah. right? They might not ever get their freedom back. Talk smart. to them about that, right? About your funk yeah. because you know whatever that you can't get your Wi Fi. Yeah, <laughs> right. right. Well, you know, Dave, we got we got a bunch of. You know supplements here, and, yeah. and I don't work out as much as I would, you know, like. You know, and I've, my son trains in boxing, and I got to start with him. But awesome. Um, but you know, I, I think life in general is is a lot like you know when you know you're in the gym, I guess, and you know it's all perspective. You know, if you're there and you're working out, and you know you got a little belly like I do, and a double chin, and you're doing all this stuff, and you're looking in the mirror, and you're like, man, you know, I'm in, I'm I'm not in very great shape. Then you look at this guy over here, and, you know, and he looks like you, and you're just like, man, I'm, you know, yeah. intimidated, you know, because this guy looks a lot better than me. But then you look over here, and there's a 400 pound dude, and he's, you know, he's struggling. Yeah, he's, he's struggling, just... and you're like, well, at least I'm better than this guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I may not be it's, him, but I'm better, you know. But it's perspective. And, yes, and everything is in perspective, and and so to Love me, that. you know, um, you know, just seeing all this, and, and just like I said, just the perspective. And, it's it's all in the way that your mind state is because you can take everything and just keep yourself in that funk. But if you don't turn your perspective around, 
you, you can't get out. I, I always tell a story, is, is, um, and not to get all spiritual, but um, and there's a story in the Bible, the woman at the well, and uh, there's a bunch of people around her, and they're about to stone her, and you know, Jesus walks up, and he starts writing in the, in the, in the dirt, and, you know, not saying a word. He's just, and they're like, hey, what are you going to do? You know, she was an adulterous woman or whatever. And then, you know, he's all quiet, and he doesn't say anything, and then finally he looks at them and says, you with the, you know, anybody that has no sin, cast the first stone. They drop their stones, and they walk away. So he didn't do anything to change the events, to change the situation. He just changed the perspective. That's and it. I think once we change our perspective in everything we do, it's 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 everything. Yeah, it's it's absolutely everything. And the other thing I want to I want to touch on too with you talking about the gym, right? Is it relates to life in this way? I always say struggle equals strength, right? So life is just like a muscle. So the more stress you put under that muscle, now it's going to grow and it's going to become more reliable and stronger. But when you stop putting that stress and that struggle on that muscle, it atrophies, it starts to disappear. So, it looks like this instead but, of that. <laughs> but here's the thing, right? Is because you live your life by saying, I'm not gonna be the person I was six months ago, that means you have to be out of your comfort zone. Yes. That means there has to be some struggle in order for growth yeah. to happen. So I think the gym, right? And you were talking about the supplements, it, it's, it's life. Yeah. Right, like you were saying, perspective, yes. and I believe struggle equals strength all day long. All day and, long, and uh, yeah, so man, I'd love to uh, just keep me posted on the prisons, man. Yeah, love sure. to go in and uh, for sure. and donate books and, and yeah. really just uh, and just yeah. whatever. And we'd, we'd love to have you come out. Um, you know, in December we're getting ready to do our toy drive. Okay, uh, this will be our eighth annual toy drive. Okay, um, it's going to be for two days. It's going to be here in National City um, at Sweetwater Harley. So. Um, September, uh, December 8th, we're going to have Ray Mysterio. He's going to come out and do autograph signings. Love it. And then um, and December 9th, we're going to have a concert. Um, right now, we've booked um, Andy Vargas, which is the lead singer for Carlos Santana. He's going to be out performing. He performed last year for us as well. Um, last year, we had P.O.D. and Frankie J. along with Andy Vargas. So um, we're working on see what bands are going to come out this year and, and support. So um, And Ruben's going to get Ray Mysterio on Monster Motivator TV, baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I love it, love and, it. And he's 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 great to work with. He's easy to work with, and yeah. he's um, just a good guy. Yeah, and, and I mean, being the underdog his whole entire career, yeah. that is motivation alone. I and, love and it. So he belongs on. I'd love show. to share that yeah. that that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I always call it the Rocky stories, man. Oh, yeah. Pull those gold nuggets right. out. Yeah. Oh, those Rocky stories. Yeah. Maybe we can even he's, sneak Conan on here. Yeah. Oh, Conan would love to do so. Yeah. And he has he has his own podcast, which is on the Chris Jericho Network, and. Oh yeah, his podcast is incredible, man. It's we really love it, man. Numbers, let's so. let's connect it. Yeah, let's um, love it, man. And uh, just so throwing it out there, we're brought to you by MM Nutrition. Uh, this is my world. See, new, sports nutrition is my world, and uh, this is the most potent natural testosterone booster hit the market in a very long time. Um, and as you guys know, I'm I'm just so passionate about this world because I believe that you need everything's an inside job your perspective your mindset's an inside job your physical world in order to turn that around and hit an elite level it's an inside job right it starts with and when we as men right when we start to age 35 40 years and older our whole life takes us in reverse oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Our, our hormones <laughs> go in reverse right so that's why I'm so passionate about um, this and then nutrition, what we're ready to launch. And I always say, when you raise your testosterone, everyone smiles. Right. <laughs> so, so for those on, on my Facebook over here, can yeah. you tell them how to find your stuff? Yeah, so you can find us at Dave Daly, D-A-L-E-Y-M-M, like monstermotivator.com. And, uh, and we'll have a, we're going to be uh, educating people on nutritional products. Mm -hmm. We're all the way starting with the manufacturer, what to look for, mm -hmm. what not to, what you don't want, the certifications, and we're going to take it all the way mm -hmm. through, man, and educate people. And mm -hmm. I used to own a sports nutrition store in Vista. Oh, nice. So our tagline was, you're going to leave with more information you came in with, whether you like <laughs> it or not. <laughs> whether you like it or not. So how do they find these online? So, again, Dave Daly, mm -hmm. MM. Uh, nutrition so it's a natural testosterone booster that turns a clock back from the inside out 40 years old usually an, an older for men and uh, it, it literally just turns a clock back man because 
as we age, everything goes in reverse. Yes. That's why at 17, 18, 19, 22 years old, Whatever we did, we do it all day, all night, the next day, yeah. and still be fine. Yeah. But as we now age, we feel it. Now, <laughs> we get, now, now we get now we get now we get beat up. So is, is this in any of the stores that we could? Uh, I, I, I have uh, right now. Most of our stuff's going to be online. Ninety something percent of our business is going to be online. But we do have uh, we have one store right now in Escondido, uh, Body Works. Nice. Uh, Jose's got them. He's caught carrying them. But we're mainly going to be online <laughs> through our online funnel and through affiliates so we also nice. offer affiliates so if somebody wants their own code and somebody and they decide they want to promote this product uh, they can get a, a percentage when a sale goes through and then the people get a percentage off for using their code but we just I'm just got some really cool feedback so far got two or three guys about 15 days in one guy's a life coach in Carlsbad Nice. And he already showed some before and afters. And what he's saying is he's just feeling energy, but the energy is lasting throughout the yeah. day. Um, but again, we're going to start to turn that and clock it's a back. workout with this. Here's the deal. Right? So you don't just take these. So, and so glad you went there. And here's what <laughs> separates us from a lot of this world, right? Because there's a lot of smoke and mirrors. Yeah. There's a lot of marketing. I tell people all day long, don't look at the front. It's going to tell you it's going to take you to the moon. Yeah. Look at the back, educate yourself, and that's what I do, I educate people in the back. But here's the deal, they're called supplements for a reason. They supplement your lifestyle, so the cleaner your lifestyle, the better these are going to work. And, and if anybody tells you they have the magic pill, right, run, don't look back. <laughs> to run, don't look back. This is pretty magical, it sounds magical. Well, you know what, it's all, it's, again, it's all relative to your lifestyle. The effort, the, just like business, right? If you're not willing to get up off the couch, if you're not willing to go take those steps, well then don't look around yeah. and don't again like you were talking about. Well, don't don't start looking at guy going. How come you're not doing anything? Yeah. He's saying because you ain't doing anything, <laughs> yeah. right? Let's yeah. lace up the yeah. boots and get the work. Yeah. You know, you can't look around. You know, no, have that, you got to own it. Focus. You you got to own it um, and do it. And that and again, that's what supplements are. They're um, they supplement your lifestyle. So. Uh, I'm really pumped, man. I'm, I'm yeah, excited awesome. to do this. This is my world. And what about the book? Let's talk about so we got the knockout fear in the first round, yeah, and then like it's um, it talk, it's got my story, mm -hmm. and just talks about um, the the what I believe is the biggest bully in life is the fear barriers, mm -hmm. right? And the fear of the fear of the darkness, the fear of uh, what if, the fear of failure, the fear yeah. of success. There's all kinds of fears, yeah. but um, I believe there's two major major fears that stop most people and all of us somewhere in our life and that's the fear of change and the fear of what other people think yes and i always say the fear Love of that. change right is again perspective yeah. if you understand and you wrap your brain around this this statement this concept change evolution that train is leaving with or without you yes. your decision is are you going to jump on that train or are you going to run you over yeah. right Fear, fear, I think, is a is a thief of dreams too, and exactly for all the reasons you just said. You know, people have all these dreams to do stuff, and they want to take their whatever it is, their career or whatever it is that they want to do to another level, but they're afraid of what someone may think, mm -hmm. or they're afraid of change. Those 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 words of uh, yeah, change. The the words of like, well, I've never done it like this before, or that's not the way we used what to if? do it. Yeah, what if? all those things, man. I think is is what holds a lot of people back. And, um, you know, we've we've tried to move forward without without doing that, and can't tell you how many times I failed. You know, and and it's, here's and, and here's the other thing that I always share, and, and my keynotes are the title is fearless is bullshit, mm -hmm. and here's what I mean by that, is we we were raised to feel and think that if you feel fear, there's something wrong, you're weak, right? So as we're going through these new things and we feel this fear, we're frustrated, we're, we're confused. Why are we feeling? Fear is a feeling just like anger, just like love, just yes. like joy. Yeah. It's how you manage it. And I always say it's either your, your, your uh, heaviest anchor or your strongest propeller. Yeah. You have to decide. Yeah. But fear is a real feeling. Yeah. It's, it's courageous. See, courage comes from that three-letter word, core. Right? It comes from the inside. Yeah. So when you're courageous, you're moving in the face of fear anyway. Yeah. You know? I love that. Yeah. I love <laughs> because that. it's so true, yeah. right? Yeah. Because it's real. Yeah. And that that's that's what it's about. And um, yeah, so I'm a big, big believer that this is the biggest bully in life. And if you allow that bully and look, at the end of the day, 
how, how do you stop a bully? You got to step up, yeah. right? Well, if you them. if you don't, yeah. if you don't, you keep, keep getting your lunch money yeah. taken, yeah. right? And I love to eat. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> I need my lunch money. <laughs> right. I need my, I need my money. lunch money. Yeah. So, Ruben, I want to thank you for uh, oh. taking the time. Thank so you. we end the show the same way, right? So I'm a big believer, in, as you are, that life makes the rules, right? I don't make the rules, you don't make the rules. And life, life always asks the questions. And right now, life is asking Ruben a question. Uh-oh. And uh, life is saying, Ruben, if you could um, live your life purring like a kitten or roaring like a lion, what would you do? Roaring like a lion. I know it, man. I know Roar it. Like so, and life is asking you, if you, could feel, if you could live your life in this unstoppable state, the majority of your day, how would that feel? Uh, it would feel like I would need to continue to take some of these right here. <laughs> it feels pretty amazing. <laughs> pretty amazing. <laughs> pretty amazing. So we're going to take this out Monster Motivator style. It's called the Monster Motivator Roar. Yeah. Roar? Yeah. And here's why. Because I believe that your state of mind and your physical state determines how you look and how you feel. So when you see somebody that has depression, where where's their physical state? Where are their shoulders? Down. Where's their head? Down. Down. Where's their eyes? Down. Down. When someone feels good about themselves, where are their shoulders? They're yeah. up. Mm. Chest is up. Looking right. you in the eye. Tell my son that. Right? Shake yeah. someone's hand, look him in the eye. So that's what it's all about. And that's what the Monster Motivator Roar is all about. So we end it the same way. And the sound is just as important as the pose. And we're going to do this on three. Ready? Right here, baby. On three. One, two, three.